King Charles III was confronted by a protester during a visit to Wales on Friday who objected to the public funding of the monarchy as Britain is in the grip of the highest level of inflation in 40 years. The outburst took place as Charles and his wife Queen Camilla were visiting Wales as part of an accession tour of the four nations making up the United Kingdom, following the death of Queen Elizabeth II at the age of 96 on September 8. After attending a service of prayer for the life of the late Queen at Landaff Cathedral in Cardiff, the monarch and his consort met members of the public during a walkabout. Recorded by news cameras and uploaded to Twitter by Sky News, as Charles shook hands and spoke to well-wishers a member of the crowd loudly announced, Charles. While we struggle to heat our homes we have to pay for your parade. The taxpayer pays £100 million for you, and for what? In response to the unidentified man who appeared to record the interaction on his mobile phone the king acknowledged him by saying oh before continuing down the line of people. Charles and Camilla were generally well received during their Welsh visit which also included the receiving of official condolences on the death of the queen during a special session at the Senate, Welsh Parliament. There were, however, a number of voices against the royal couple's visit including anti-monarchy protesters who booed as they arrived in Cardiff. The unidentified man who raised the point of royal funding with the king did so as discussions about the cost of living grows among concerned Britons. Inflation in the UK hit 10.1%, year-on-year, in July, its highest level in 40 years, with increasing energy prices leaving Brits braced for a difficult winter. After the confrontation in Cardiff, it was revealed that Charles himself shared a concern about how people would keep warm this winter, during a conversation with Mark Dakeford the First Minister of Wales. Speaking to Talk TV's Tom Newton Dunn on Friday evening, Drakford revealed that the King spoke of projects he has been involved with to offer solutions to some of the problems which may face the Welsh people in the months ahead. The King has always had a very direct interest in the things that are happening in contemporary Wales, the future of our agriculture, the impact of climate change, he said. He mentioned the impact of the cost of living crisis and how that will impact on people here in Wales. Has concerned as to how people will manage through what is going to be a difficult winter, Drakford later added. He was interested to tell me about some of the projects that he has heard of, or become involved in dealing, for example, with food waste, making sure that we don't waste a precious resource when some people might be going without. The First Minister also added that the King remained interested, as always in renewable energy generation here in Wales, and how it might play a bigger part in future energy security. Charles has come under criticism since his accession over money after it was revealed that the monarch won't have to pay inheritance tax on the Queen's personal fortune, estimated at $430 million. Despite this, early public polling indicates that the majority of the UK public support Charles as the new king. In a survey undertaken in the days following his accession 63% of respondents said that Charles would do a good job as monarch, a figure which has doubled since May where just 32% of respondents answered in the same way. In a speech to mark his accession, the prince said he would follow his mother's example of public service and dedication to the country. As the Queen herself did with such unswerving devotion, I too now solemnly pledge myself, throughout the remaining time God grants me, to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation, he said. And wherever you may live in the United Kingdom, or in the realms and territories across the world, and whatever may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavor to serve you with loyalty, respect and love, as I have throughout my life. A state funeral for Queen Elizabeth II will be held on Monday September 19 at Westminster Abbey. The event is expected to be the largest state ceremony held in Britain since the Queen's coronation in 1953 and world leaders from the majority nations across the world will be in attendance including President Biden, Justin Trudeau, and Emmanuel Macron.